What is up my loves? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Natalie Hughes. I am a life mindset and manifestation coach on my platform and in my business. I support self-led women in creating emotionally fulfilled, purpose-driven lives. In today's video, we are having a conversation about manifestation, which I'm very excited for. We are having a conversation about a technique that I really, really love, which is basically using personification in order to manifest. I'm going to explain the energetics of why this works, and then I'm going to explain what it is. And then maybe depending on how I feel, I might tell you how I came across this. I might tell you the inspiration. Maybe I won't because obviously I can't think of it. So let's jump right into the video. First things first, what is personification? Personification is when you give human characteristics to something that is not human. Personification, why can I not think of example. Well, personification in this instance for manifestation purposes would be like personifying money. You know what? Sometimes. Okay. Hey Siri, define personification. Personification means the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristics to something non-human or the representation okay. of an abstract quality. Thank you. I had to double check because I started this and I knew that I wanted to talk about it and I obviously have this planned in my mind, but then a little part of me that feels insecure was like, what if that's not what personification is? And sometimes instead of going back and forth with the limiting belief, you just have to debunk it right then and there. So that's what we did. You're welcome. That was a mini course. That was a master class. <laughs> okay. 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 So focusing. In this case, the example that I use will be with money. You know how some people, money teachers, money manifestation teachers will talk about like money loves to support me. Money loves to come into my world. Money loves to be in my life. That did not resonate with me. When I was first hearing it, I was in my logical mind, my hyper masculine mind. I'm like, I don't understand. Money loves to come to me. Money doesn't love to come to me because money is not a human being. Like I just wasn't really understanding it. I wasn't connecting. So when I would say those affirmations, money loves to come to me, that didn't feel like anything to me. That didn't activate anything to me. And one thing that I say again and again and again, when it comes to affirmations, it's not the words that are the magic. It's how you feel that is the magic. Your affirmation is you affirming something to be true. And there are a lot of people who say, you don't have to believe it for it to be true. And yes, that's true. But you have to understand what you're affirming for it to work for you. You don't have to believe what you're affirming when you first start saying affirmations, when you first start creating and building out a new belief, it's going to feel like a complete fucking lie. Of course it is. You've been living the completely opposite experience. If you lived an experience where you had to work really hard to make money and today you started saying making money is so easy. Money grows on trees. That might sound like a lie to you. That might sound like bullshit to you. That might sound like that's not true. So you can start saying a new affirmation, even though it doesn't feel 110% true and still get results. That's a part of like the belief building process. But when you're saying the phrase money loves to come to me and you don't understand why money loves to come to me, you don't understand why the affirmation works. You don't, you feel absolutely nothing. You have no understanding of the law of assumption and you're just saying shit to say, to say shit. You just have a whole bunch of sticky notes and post-its all over your mirrors just because like, no, that's not going to shift your energy because not only do you not believe that statement, but you don't believe in that statement. You don't believe in in what you're affirming. The people who can affirm and manifest even when they don't believe it, they still have some sort of belief in manifestation or an energy backing them up. So I'm going to explain that and how that works to you now. 
in manifestation with your affirmations and anything really, everything is about energy. So when you're saying affirmations, and excuse me, I am recording this on a MacBook and the fans are turning on, what can we do? Let's move on. Just just in case you can hear that, that sound in the background of the video. So anyway, when you're affirming something, you're affirming something to be true. It's like you're commenting on something. So let's say you're feeling sick. If you're feeling sick and you go, oh, I'm feeling sick, you're talking about something that's going on in your life, that's still an affirmation. An affirmation could be comparable to like an observation, right? So when you're choosing to create your reality and you're choosing to form new beliefs, sometimes your affirmations are not based on things that you observe. Your affirmations are based on something else. They're based on a spiritual principle. They're based on an energetic principle. They're based on some or other sort of logic. So most people are creating their beliefs in their life based on the things that they can see and taste and touch and feel and blah, blah, blah. Other people who are more empowered, people who have the receiver's mindset, they're basing their affirmations, they're basing their beliefs off of a million and one different other things. We do not have time to get into that right now. I have to stay focused because I'm going to get tired soon and I need this video to be one and done. No edits. Stay on track. (laughs) So you have affirmations. When you're saying your affirmations, you might not believe them at first, but you have to understand the energy of what's going on when the affirmations are working, right? So an affirmation is basically a reminder. An affirmation is a reminder of some work that you've already put in, of some understanding that you have already developed. So if you're like, I have no money mindset practice. I've never looked at my negative money beliefs. I've never cleared out my past. I've never looked at my past relationships, but you're affirming, I easily attract the love of my life. Like maybe you're not gonna get the results that you want as quickly as you want them. When you have an experience like a limiting belief comes up and what's the limiting belief? The limiting belief is that Um, nobody can afford my work. The limiting belief that nobody can afford my work comes up in your life. Okay, so you look at that limiting belief and you debunk it. You shift that limiting belief. Boom. A part of you shifting that limiting belief is you going, well, no, that's not true. There's billions of dollars that's constantly being circulated all over the world. There are people who are buying yachts. There are people who are buying I was going to say boats. Yes, there are people who are going on luxurious cruises. There are people buying Chanel. There are people buying Birkins. Wake me up the day that Hermes goes out of business. Wake me up the day that Chanel goes out of business. Wake me up the day that Gucci goes out of business. Wake me up the day that Apple goes out of business. When people who are selling luxury goods and services, when they start going out of business, when the cosmetics industry stops being worth billions and trillions of dollars, then I will be willing to entertain a conversation that people just can't afford to pay you. But as long as there are industries where there's billions and trillions of dollars that are being circulated all of the time, then there are people in the world who can pay you. Period, point blank. Now, do you believe that you're worthy of being paid? Do you believe supportive things about who those people are that's going to get them into your business, right? Because you could have the belief that, well, people with money don't want my work and that's just something for you to shift. That's why you want to develop the receiver's mindset because I started off this example talking about one limiting belief and then boom, here's another limiting belief that could have been within that, you know, kind of like a little... Russian roulette. 
a little Russian roulette of limiting beliefs. It's nuanced. There is no one mindset shift that's going to get you everything that you've ever wanted in your life. That's why you don't just need a mindset shift. You need a mindset practice. You need a way of being where you're identifying your unsupportive beliefs. You're debunking them. You're shifting them. You're deciding how life gets to be for you and you know how to build out more supportive beliefs. That's what I'm teaching you inside of the receivers mindset course. It's amazing. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So let's get back on track with this video though. Let's say you do that mindset work around people can't afford to pay me. We come to the conclusion, all right, there's a whole bunch of people who have money in the world. And as long as they're spending money at Hermes, as long as they're spending money at Gucci, as long as they're spending money at Apple, they can be spending money in my business. They can be spending money at my company. There is money to be made because there is money being circulated and the people who are spending the money are still making the money. Money is being circulated. I'm open to participating in that exchange in in that in the circulation of money okay so you've got that now from what you've just done from that mindset work you have the affirmation which you can create or you know if you're in programs and different things like that or you hear different stuff that really resonates with you you're like ooh okay that's what i'm going to affirm when i say this one liner when i say this one phrase i'm going to be reminding myself of the shift that just took place so whenever the limiting belief that comes into my mind, people can't afford to pay me, I can ask myself the question, is Hermes still in business? Yes, Hermes is still in business, so people can still pay me. That's an affirmation. You're welcome. That's really good. Is Hermes still in business? Yes, Hermes is still in business, so people can afford to pay me. Boom. That's the, that's the affirmation. You had an entire process where you were looking at your relationship with money, you had an entire process where you were debunking the negative unsupportive thought and the affirmation is your reminder of what you already shifted. That's what an affirmation is. So why don't we start talking about affirmations? <laughs> why did we start talking about affirmations? We're having a conversation about personification and I wanted you to have an understanding of energy, but I do not for the life of me understand why we went so deep into affirmations. And this is why, this is why I need a script. This is why I need a script. <laughs> Whatever. 2.5. Let's move on. I feel like, I feel like it works. It always works. Everything always works. You're welcome. Who is saying boo to more time with me anyway? Let's keep going. So I want you to understand how energy works. You're using personification to manifest, oh, because it's all about energy. Okay, I know exactly where we are. I thought we were lost. We're not. We're not. We were always, we were always on the right path. Okay, so I want you to understand that it's energy. If you and I had not just had that conversation about Hermes and I just walked up to you and said, is Hermes still open and in business? Then people can afford to pay you. If I just walked up to you and said that shit to you, you'd be like, excuse me? I don't understand. I just told you I feel like people can't afford to pay me. You just walked up to me and said, Hermes is making money, so you can too. Like, I don't understand. There's a disconnect there. So you're not just going to wake up and start saying the phrase, Hermes is still in business so people can afford to pay me and that drastically shift your energy and get you a fuck ton of customers and money. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by the energy shift is what's important, not the affirmation, not the words, the energy shift. After we've had this conversation, now when I tell you, is Hermes still in business? Yes, then people can afford to pay you. You're like, no, that's actually true. Why? Because in that affirmation, I'm reminding you of a conversation we already had. Think of an affirmation like an inside joke, okay? It's just a reminder of something 
that we already discussed, a key that we already participated in, right? So that's how affirmations work. When you say affirmations, you're tapping back into an energy that you've already gotten into once before. You're reminding yourself of who you are. You're reminding yourself of how life gets to be for you. You're reminding yourself of the new rules that you're, that your life, your energy, your being, and your reality are living by. Boom. Purpose of affirmations. Perfect. Perfect. The reason why we had to go into all of that around affirmations is because we're having a conversation about energy. The words don't manifest, energy manifests. And there's a lot of different ways that we could look at this. We could look at this from the perspective of like your subconscious mind speaks in symbols. We could take it there, but I don't really feel to. So let's not. I'll just, you know, throw that in there and you'll do with that what you will. The point that I'm making here when we're having a conversation about personification is that you do not have to be literal in your manifestation process for it to work. The only thing that your manifestation mindset practice needs to do is shift your energy. And as long as your manifestation mindset practice is shifting your energy, then you're manifesting. Okay. Please, 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 damn. <laughs> it's um, when the thingy majiggy is plugged into the computer. She thinks I called her name. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> okay. Focus. So you have energy. Energy shifts. Energy attracts, not words. So in this personification exercise, using personification to manifest, it's energy that you're shifting. You're shifting your energy, which is shifting your vibration. You're shifting how you feel. You're shifting what your vibrational match to. You're going to attract something differently. So let's take it back to the money example. Using personification to manifest, essentially what you're doing is you're taking your desires and you're making them a person. Imagine that what you want is a person. You want more money? Money is a person. And if money was a person, who would money be to you? How would money treat you? What would your relationship with money be like? Oh, I'm so excited. This is the part that I've been waiting for. This is the part that I've been waiting to teach on this whole entire time. While I was talking about the affirmations, I hated it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Could you imagine? But I am very excited about this. Okay. So the way that I see money, I see money like a lover. I see money like a really loyal lover. And I was just talking about this inside of the Next Level Mindset Mentorship, my six-month program. We're on month two. Inside of our call that we did on the 1st of March, I was going on about money, my lover. It was a great conversation. Anyway, focus. I see money as this hot, amazing, wonderful lover, like this like hashtag couple goals kind of lover. But this, it's like the, the, the lover that all of the girls want. And he's also the lover that all of the girls can have. You know what I'm saying? Not in like a negative way but just a positive way you know when you see somebody and they have a really good man and you're like oh like I wish that was my man not in a competing way not in a oh I want to steal him or whatever kind of way but just like damn like I wish I had that that source of inspiration my relationship with money is an experience where money can be with me and money can be serving me and money can be supporting me and when other women see the way that money shows up for me and money supports me, then they're also like, damn, I want more of money. I want to experience money in that way. And then money can go to them and money can flow to them. Now, what's happening a little bit underneath the surface with this is that one of my beliefs that support me in receiving money is when I receive more money, I can inspire the world. Why does money want to come to me? So personifying your desires, 
why does what you want want you? In the very last video that we did on the channel, we said what you want wants you because there's no resistance in your physical reality. This is true. From this perspective, using this personification technique, if what you wanted was a person, why would that person want to be with you? And for me, if money was a human being, money would want to be with me because being with me is excellent PR. <laughs> being with me is an excellent public relations move. When money is with me, I'm going to show it off because females be shopping. <laughs> when money is with me, I'm, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to spend it freely. I'm going to trust it. So I'm going to use money in the way that money always wants to be used. It fulfills money to support me and show up for me and be in my world. Money is an amazing lover. If what you wanted had a purpose, if it was fulfilling for what you desire to be in your world, what experience would that be like? Money as the person feels fulfilled. Money was made. That is money's purpose to show up for me in my life, to help me in my life, to support me in my life. Money feels fulfilled when it can show up for me. So money shows up for me in my life. Money helps me in my life. Money supports me in my life. I'm wearing the clothes that I want to wear. I have the glasses that I want to have. I have the technology that I want. I travel the way that I want. I have the, well, it's technology too, but I have like the video cameras and everything that I want to document all of my travels all over the world. I am having the time of my life. I'm free. I'm creatively expressing myself in my wardrobe and the way that I dress and just the way that I show up in life and the way that I travel. I am having such a fun time I am just somebody whose personality persona everything about her just gives off wealth I am this woman who is powerfully supported by money and so the women in my community the people who see me walking down the street they're like god damn that lady is loaded that woman is so supported by money I wish I could be that supported by money I wish I could be that loaded I wish I could be that loved. I wish I had that kind of relationship with money. And as they're seeing me and being inspired by my relationship that I have with money, well now they're opening up more and more to having money. Because I'm a 25 year old black woman who doesn't have a college degree. And I'm making so much money and I'm creating wealth for myself and money loves to be in my presence and money loves to support me and I'm fat and I'm loud and I experience anger and I express it and I really don't give a fuck and I'm a lot of things that most people's standards say I should not be receiving money. I should not be successful. I should not be able to win in life. I should not be able to succeed. So when the people who have identities that align with mine see me being loved and supported and taken care of and all of that stuff, now they're going, huh? Now, if this loud, fat, black girl with no college degree can do it, then maybe this fat girl can do it. Then maybe this black woman can do it. Then maybe this young woman can do it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Why does money want to be in my life? Because it's excellent PR. It's excellent PR. Who wouldn't want to be in a relationship with me? Like, let's be honest. Let's be serious. Okay. So you're personifying your desire. You're taking what you want and you're bringing it to life in a way that supports you. Now, there's another way that you can do this. Instead of just taking your desire and bringing it to life, you can also take other things and bring them to life in order to support you. Put a pin in that 
take it back to money because there's something that I forgot. When I sit here and I have this conversation about money is so supportive of me, money wants to be in my life, money loves to connect with me. If money was a human being, then money would be showing up in my life. Money would be pouring into my bank accounts. Money would be the most devoted, supported husband that a girl could ever have. And because money is so devoted to me as my life partner in astrology i have taurus on the cusp of my seventh house so every time i talk about money being my life partner and my husband i really think it's very funny because taurus rules like money and the seventh house rules like relationships and like you know like life partners <laughs> so it's just very funny to me like well actually no in my natal chart it, it literally says like married to the money what can I say what can I say okay let's move on so <laughs> okay 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 let's move on so as I'm having this conversation about money how do I feel about money what is my energy about money what is my vibration when it comes to money I feel supported by money money is this incredibly supportive devoted husband figure in my life so my retirement accounts get to be filled the fuck up, overflowing. Money has a vested interest in my future generations. So all of the things that I need for generational wealth get to be taken care of because money cares. Money is concerned. Of course, money wants to fill up my savings accounts because when my savings accounts are filled up and I've reached my financial goals, then I feel even more confident in my ability to spend freely on the things that I want and the things that I love. Money wants to see me happy. Money wants to see me feeling safe. Money wants to see me feeling secure. So it's obvious that the money is filling up in my savings accounts. And it's obvious that my bills are getting paid because money wants to see me sleeping soundly like a baby at night. Money wants to see me relaxed. Money wants to see me well rested. Money wants to see me replenished. Money is my life partner. Money is my support system. Money is here to support me. Money is my ally. Money is my friend. Money is my lover. Okay. Personification. You're doing it every single time you sing Karma by Taylor Swift. Karma is my best friend. Karma is a god. Karma is the breeze in my hair on the weekend. Karma is a relaxing thought. Hold on. I can't listen to the whole song in my head, but at some point she says like karma is a cat purring on my lap because it loves me. What you want and what you desire, if it was a person, if it was a thing, when you say karma is my best friend, that means karma has my motherfucking back. That means karma is fucking you up on my behalf. That's an act formation that shifts your energy in its personification, right? So when I'm having this conversation about money, first of all, I can like feel like on some spiritual psychic shit, I can feel like an energetic presence, <laughs> an energetic presence. Money feels like mm, clairsentiently, money feels like an energy and a presence right here at all times, just standing behind my back. And as I'm having this conversation about money shows up for me, money loves me, money pours into me. How do I feel with money? I feel safer. I feel more financially secure. I feel more loved. Manifestation and energy is symbolic. I don't have to be logical and masculine and focus on the things that I can see and taste and touch and blah, blah, blah for this shit to work. All I need to do is figure out how to shift my energy. When you personify your desire, you make your desire a human being, you use that as a tool to shift your energy. And you do the same thing when you say money doesn't grow on trees. 
When you're saying that, you're saying money isn't abundant. You're saying money is scarce. You're saying there's not enough money in the world. When you say that, how do you feel? You feel like money is something that's out of your reach. You feel like money is something that's difficult to obtain. That's still the personification. Don't get too deep into it. <laughs> Don't get too deep into it. You understand what the hell I'm saying. Let's move on. So you can bring these things to life with personification, metaphor, simile. It really does not matter. You're bringing your desires to life in a way that supports you or doesn't support you all the time. So bada bing, bada boom, you're personifying it to make you feel better in a way that supports you, in a way that makes you feel like money has your back. If money was a human being, how would money treat you? Not based on what's going on in your physical reality right now, but if there were infinite possibilities, if you could be treated like anything by money, if money could be any person, then what would money be for you? If money could be a human being for you, would money be like... Edward Cullen from why the fuck is the word in my head the vampire diaries no I've never even watched that television show babe <laughs> you know sometimes your brain you're like I know that that's not the word like please stop giving me this option I know the option is incorrect and I'm not gonna choose it Twilight would he be a character like that from Twilight I'm thinking what's another like really romantic it doesn't matter that's the example you're getting from me today that's the example you're getting from me today so boom there's that now let's move on to the next thing you can focus on your desires and then you can also focus on other fun stuff in the realm of personification right so in my business in my business what if my you can make your business a person sure but I go even more specific. What if my content was a person? Who would my content be? What would my content be? If my courses were people, what people would my courses be? You could do YouTube videos, you could do Instagram videos, I just do content. If my content was a person, who would it be? If my courses were people, what would they be if you're not a business owner or a course creator? If the projects that you're working on were people, what would they be? If the shit that you worked on was a person, what would it be? If this report that I typed up was a person, it would be the most Virgoist Virgo that you've ever met in your life. If this report that I typed up was a person, it would be the person who dots their I's and crosses their T's. It would be the person who has it under control. This report would be the person who has got it. This, this report would be the person who has everything together. This report would be the person who has taken everything into consideration. This report would be the kind of person who really gets into all of the details. This report would be the person that the company just trusts. They just know that this person is trustworthy. They just know that this person has integrity. They just know that this person is moving in the best interest of everyone. When you take that project, proposal, whatever, and you bring it to life, what does that make you feel? If your project was this type A Virgo person, then that would make you feel trust in your own work. I would trust this work to do well. I would trust this work to please my bosses. And so now I'm getting into the energy. I'm getting into that vibration of positive expectation around my work. I expect my work to do well. My work is a type A Virgo. I, what else could I do? What else could I do? If my work was a Capricorn and it doesn't have to be around astrology, I'm just an astrologer, so I'm going to work with what I have to get what I want. You know what I'm saying? 
if my work was a Capricorn, then maybe this is the project that's going to help me advance and further myself in my career because Capricorn really cares about prestige and Capricorn really cares about growth and expansion and working their way up in a company and being a household name. That's kind of a different vibe. One is going to give you the vibe of being super trustworthy and super helpful and just I trust that this project project is going to get the job done and the other might get you into the energy of being seen of being rewarded of being you know applauded for the work that you're doing and experiencing advancement in your company or in your job because of the work that you do right best example I got for you is those two things for my corporate girlies okay so you do with that what you will now for me in my business Oh, I have so much fun with this. So first of all, my content on social media, my content on social media is like the fun friend that you have who you go over her house and she's like the best hostess. She's got the greatest aesthetics like her home is just beautiful she's got some really great conversational pieces but she's also that friend who just knows a little bit about everything you just want to hang out with her you just want to be around her you just want to connect with her you can go over her house and you can laugh with her for hours and you can also talk about more serious things she's kind of like a little bit of like a gemini she's got a little bit of like popcorn knowledge you know what i'm saying information about everything she can have a conversation with anyone about everything and she's just the girl that you want to be around she's the girl that you want to connect with right as I'm having this conversation about my content, what is the energy that I'm getting into? How is my energy shifting? Well, now I'm perceiving my content. I'm tapped into that vibration and energy of my content being something that people want to engage with. People want to like my videos. People want to watch my videos. People want to spend time with my videos. People laugh and enjoy my videos. People like the aesthetics of the content that I create. Bada bing, bada boom. In my business, <laughs> in my business, on my landing pages, for example, if my landing pages, which is just the mm, website page that tells people about my course or about my freebie, right? You read the little thing, you put in your information or you pay to enroll in the program. That's a landing page. What are my landing pages? In my business, my landing pages are like sales associates. My my landing pages are the sales associates where you walk into the store and they want to know everything about you, right? Based on who you are, based on what you're looking for. They're like, oh yes, you would love this bag. Oh yes, you would love this wallet. Oh, this dress is the perfect dress for you. They're the sales associate. They're the person who's there for you. They're going to make sure that you get the best product for you. They're going to make sure that you get just the right, perfect dress for your prom, the right, perfect bag that you're looking for at the store for the purpose that you're looking for it, right? They're the sales associate who knows everything. They know what kind of animal this bag is made out of. They can tell you about the processes that have gone into making this bag. They know how much it costs. Their job is to get you the very best product, the best fitting product, the best fitting dress for you. They are the best sales associates. My landing pages are the number one sales associates in the region, okay? They are the best of the best sales associates. So as I'm sitting here personifying my landing pages, what is the energy that I'm getting into? My landing pages sell like a motherfucker. My landing pages are excellent. My landing pages do a great job at communicating to my visitors whether or not my offer is for them. My landing pages are also in this attractive energy. They're seeking out the perfect people. My landing pages, the energy is calling out to the perfect people to come into the store and to buy the perfect courses or 
digital products for them. That's who my landing pages would be if they were a person. So my social media is the really fun girl. You love to hang out with her. You could hang out with her for a sleepover. You could just come over her house for tea. You'd also love to party with her. She's just a great girl. She's a vibe. She's a mood. You love to be around her. You love to be in her energy. My landing pages are the sales associate that are going to get you exactly what you need when you need it. They got your back. A new product comes in. They're going to make sure that you know exactly about it. Boom that's the landing page who are my courses if my courses were people then my courses would be your very best friend my courses would be your very best friend my courses are the friend that you call at two o'clock in the morning who comes running my courses are the most loyal best friend that a girl could possibly have my courses are the friend that you call when you're done with the relationship and you need somebody to come and help you pack your shit and go. My courses are the friend that you call when you're ready for a new job, when you're done, when you're fed up, when you're over it. My courses are the person that you call when you're ready for solutions, when you're ready to see things differently, when you're ready to get up and get it, when you need that accountability partner, when you need somebody to cheer you on, when you need somebody to help you see that you can do this. And depending on which course it is, it gets even more specific, but this is getting a little lengthy. So we'll leave it there. You can personify your desires, but you can also personify the different things that you have going on in your life. You could personify your wardrobe. You could personify your car. If you wanted to tap into the vibe of your car being more reliable, you could personify your job, your workplace, the company that you work at. You could assign human characteristics to anything and you decide what you want that dynamic to be like. And you can play that game with yourself in your mind. It's just a fun game to get your energy changing and shifting. There are certain things that if I don't have the energy to always be on it, to always be doing it, I could... I had a habit of telling myself the story of like, I can't get what I want. I can't do what I need because I don't have the energy to do that. But when my landing page and my content and my courses are human beings and they can work 24 seven nonstop, even when I'm away, my sales associate is doing her job. Even when I'm away, my content is, she's yapping 24 seven nonstop and I love her for it. Thank you, queen. Even when I can't show up in my business, my landing page is doing her job, my courses are doing their job, my content is doing her job. When I have an experience with some email stuff that we're not going to get into, I said, hold on. If my email was a person, my email would be on some Marie Laveau type shit. If my email was a person, then my email would be this powerful lioness mother figure, this woman who walks onto the scene and she doesn't ask for change. She tells you exactly what the fuck is about to occur. She's the woman who expects to receive her desire. She's the woman who gets what she wants. So now it's really about getting into the receiver's mindset. When I think about the email, when I think about the shit that, mm, I would love to get into more, but I don't have the time to get into more. I'm not talking about in this video. I'm talking about in my day-to-day -day life. My energy is limited. I don't have the capacity to be everything everywhere all at once. But when I can personify, when I can say that's the energy of my emails, that's permanent. Those emails are sent. Those emails are there. As long as the emails are in my inbox, that energy is there. And she's doing what the fuck she needs to do. Okay, and if you know who Marie Laveau is, then you know exactly what the hell I need her to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you have that experience in my business. Even when I'm sleeping, my girls are working. My girls are working. And now I'll get just a little bit before we end this into what inspired this. I was doing some breath work and I had this realization 
of like, you are so supported. You do have so much help. From the scheduler that you use to schedule out your posts to your landing page and your courses themselves. These are all your helpers. These are all your supporters. And they're supporting you in changing the world. And they're supporting you in building wealth. They're supporting you and they're helping you. If my courses were a person, my course is fulfilled when somebody signs up and enrolls and gets to experience her. My course is fulfilled when she gets to make me money and support me because that's what she was made for. That's her purpose. So I'll leave you with this. If you were personifying your desires, if your desires or your work that you're doing was a thing, what would it be? You can do this with your own like personality. If your appeal was a person, what would your appeal be? If my appeal was a person, then my appeal would be Jessica Rabbit. You know what I'm saying? You can start playing with how you see yourself, who you are, how you see your work, what your work is, how you see your content, what your content is. You can start playing with everything and you're just really learning how to play with energy. And when you can spend your time playing with energy in a way that uplifts you, in a way that supports you in getting what you want, then you're spending your time in alignment with your desires. Okay? Okay. You spend your time going on and on and on about why the project is so good and the proposal is so amazing and why this is this and this is this. You're spending time in the vibration of your desire. You're spending time attracting people to you. You're spending time influencing outcomes in your favor. That's all that I got for you. If you want more from me, if you want the nitty gritty, if you want the step by step, if you want the best friend that any girl could ever have, then I highly recommend checking out the receiver's mindset course. It's going to be linked in the description box and it's basically going even deeper into what we've discussed here, how to shift your limiting beliefs how to structure your own mind in a way where you're always arguing in support of receiving what you want and desire in life. It's an empowerment course. It is so incredibly amazing and I cannot wait for you to get into it and experience it and you seriously have to go and check out that landing page because it's fabulous, especially if you're on the computer. Like if you're on the phone, then like you really, like you have to check it out. But if you're on the computer, like don't miss it, it's good. It's really good. I, I put my time into it. The lady page is fabulous. It's fabulous. One of the best sales associates that I have. It's just beautiful, breathtaking. I'm done talking now. I love you. Thank you for hanging out with me. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.